Is the Inflation Reduction Act actually meant to reduce inflation? Are solar panels, lithium batteries, wind turbines really meant to benefit the lives of Americans? Find out today as I'm joined by my special guest, attorney Karina Reeser. I'm Drenda, and this is Drenda On Guard. Let's get into it. Thank you for joining me today, all you fighters for truth. Before we get into the video, please like, share, and subscribe so that others can see what's going on and hear. We need to share this information and we can learn something and we can help others learn. Today's episode is going to be shocking. So click the notification bell so you never miss an upload. Now you might have heard about the rampant inflation that's been sweeping across our country for the last four years. Basic goods and necessities have been noticeably more expensive. I know I like bacon and it's gone up 60%. And it doesn't seem like things will change anytime soon. But don't worry, the government is here to help you with the Inflation Reduction Act, or at least that's what they claimed the new bill would do in 2022. But is that really the case? Joining me today is an expert on the topic, Karina Reeser, here to explain what's really going on. Karina, it's so great to have you on the program today. Thank you. So now tell me a little bit about your expertise. What do you do? So I have uh, over 30 years of business experience in retail and in real estate, and I'm also a licensed attorney in the state of Ohio and also in Florida and have a private practice. Very good, and uh, I know you attend our ministry, and that's how we got to kind of meet each other and know each other a little bit. And so we are looking at this Inflation Reduction Act, and uh, you know, it's, uh, it's gonna fix everything for everybody. And I know you've done some intensive study on that. My husband and I have, I covered that, the whole kind of, I call it, and I now I heard uh, Donald Trump this past uh, couple weeks call it, the Green New Scam, and I call it that, talking about that in Fight Like Heaven, I talk about the World Economic Forum. And uh, we know Klaus Schwab has stepped down as the uh, overseer completely of it. And I don't know if that's for optics because uh, folks like me and many others have been targeting and telling and exposing what the World Economic Forum is trying to really do uh, to America and to nations and trying to do away with national identity so they can bring us into their utopian or dystopian world. So I hit that in Fight Like Heaven and, um, uh, you know, talked a little bit about this in uh, They're Coming for Your Children, the whole new climate emergency agenda as well. And uh, involved in that is a lot of stuff. So tell me about what you've learned about the Inflation Reduction Act and is it really the intention of it behind it to reduce inflation and is that happening? Well. Boy, that's a, that's a really good question. It's a loaded it's, question. It's a, it's a complicated question because when you look at the Inflation Reduction Act, you're looking at over 270 pages of new law, right? And, you know, at a really basic level, when I think about inflation, I think back to when I was uh, a college freshman studying business, getting my business degree. You know, the professor first day pulls money out of his pocket. He says, really, when you're talking about economics, you're talking about inflation, you're talking about how much can you buy with this money and you know what is the price and how are you going to be able to use this money and honestly when you start digging into uh, what the Congressional Budget Office says that the Inflation Reduction Act is there's not a whole lot in there that it, it really has anything to do with prices right so there's a whole lot in there about tax increases a whole lot in there about uh, government subsidies and uh, a lot about uh, health care regulation and uh, different kinds of programs, different kinds of loan programs. And really over the next 10 years, so it really looks from now until about 2032, right? And during that time, the biggest component of the Inflation Reduction Act is that there's over $200 billion worth of new tax revenue. So it's a big tax it's a tax increase. So what right? is supposed to be helping with our inflation and reduce our inflation is really the government saying, give us more of your money. Well, again, so you have your you have your hundred dollars and you're looking at it and you're saying, what can I purchase with this? But you realize no matter who you're taxing in America, whether you're taxing a corporation, whether you're taxing a manufacturer, any anybody, whether it's an individual, it is all going to impact how much 
that $100 is going to be able to purchase, right? Because right. even if you're taxing someone who has, you know, a major corporation, that money is not going to come out of their pocket, right? It's going to directly be passed down to the consumer. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of what you're talking about is middle, middle class bears the brunt of that in a lot of cases, right? And, you know, the government... Which destroys the middle class eventually. It is, it is an absolute attack on the middle class and, and the everyday worker because, you know, again, if people have less money to spend, that's less money going into those businesses. It's less money that can be, uh, you know, recirculated in the economy, right? So, right, right. so it doesn't in reduce inflation and it's more tax on us. Then also, uh, tell me a little bit about the green agendas because even the White House themselves quoted, uh, they were quoted as saying this is the biggest piece of green legislation that they've been able to pass. So in the guise of Inflation Reduction Act, tell me about some of the other agendas, not just the green agenda, there's some other agendas in there too. What else is in the Inflation Reduction Act? Well, sure. I mean, we can talk a lot about the the Green New Deal and all the all the push for clean energy, you know, whatever that exactly is. But also, you know, uh, let's let's go back and think about how Congress traditionally passes these laws, right? So their main their main objective, no matter what they're doing, their main objective is to tax and to spend, right? So they think that the answer to any problem that they're trying to address is to tax more and spend more. So there's over $50 billion of new spending in this and a lot of that spending. Um, you know, one of the things that I find ironic in it is that we're going in and we're, we're propping up the Affordable Care Act. So there's a lot of spending in this to keep the Affordable Care Act afloat. So if you, you know, can rewind many years to, you know, when we were all told you can keep your insurance, you, your, your premiums, your premiums mm -hmm. not going to go up right? Mm -hmm. You're going to be able to choose the doctor that you want. Um, how many of your viewers today could think back to that time mm -hmm. and say, you know what, at that time I had this insurance, that insurance is no longer offered. How many, how many uh, employers were no longer able to offer insurances, right? right? So really what that did and what this smells a lot like is it forces you into the government program. So yes. it, it's a big expansion of government programs. So if they can make everybody dependent on what they're doing, you know, be it through clean energy because you can't, uh, you can't get the product that you need or the product that you used to have or, you know, whether you're forced into some government loan program or you're forced into some government, uh, some government program that you that you were otherwise not wanting, you know, be it in healthcare. So there's a lot in here about healthcare, right? And you know, vaccinations are in there. In vaccinations, there's over six billion dollars in here allocated to make sure that adults, kids, um, and everybody, everybody from you know infant to infant to death is is getting free vaccinations. Well, it's hard to think how does that reduce inflation, right? It's very attenuated because you have to think well the way that they're saying that it does is that it's going to increase the taxes that somebody yes. is going to pay down the road, right? So if they get this tax, then it will bring down prices. That's pretty attenuated, though. Affordable, uh, affordable health care turned out not to be affordable because I know our health care jumped drastically. And so in this whole climate emergency move that they've put this Green New Deal in there, which Donald Trump, by the way, recently said uh, in Minnesota, day one, he's doing away with all the subsidies for all these green scam agendas, right? I mean, really, if we look, start looking into it, uh, you know, you may think, oh, no, I, I think the earth is falling, the sky is falling, and I need the government to save me. Uh, let's look at the, some of the facts. Uh, we, can, we can expose some of these things. We're already seeing it in the EV industry. We're already seeing what's happened now, uh, you know, uh, how we were told this was a great move, and now we've got all these auto manufacturers that can't get rid of these cars. And we've also learned the lithium batteries, uh, the expense of those, the disposal of those, the danger uh, that, that some of the dangers that are pro proposed and posed with, with some of the things we're seeing, 
this may not be such a good move after all. And that's kind of what government does, don't they? They create a problem and they say, here's the answer. And they drive that answer. Celebrities drive that answer. Uh, the media drives that answer. We get brainwashed, brainwashed. It's, oh, climate emergency, 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 emergency. The sky is falling. And then the government has this plan to fix it. And what we find is their fix is never a fix except for yeah, you know, we, we get the screws, you know, tightened on us. We get more of our tax dollars go out. And an interesting, Karina, it seems like they're on the front end to, to declare the problem and here's the answer. Then when we find out years later that these lithium batteries poison, the, you know, or, or the solar panels leach because they're made in, you know, countries, that, you know, they're cheaply made and we're told they're not going to do this and there's going to be great savings and well, we're going to save the planet and the world. In the long run, then the government's on the backside. We need to fix these problems, and then and now they're they're making money on both sides. We have politicians that invest in the solar and the lithium and the all these things on the front, and then they're turning around. They invest in the cleanup that's going to happen, and all this money that's going to have to be spent to clean up the messes. How many times have we seen this play out? We, I mean, we just it seems to be a cycle, and the government gets bigger, and the taxes get greater, and the middle class shrinks more and we end up with paupers and elitist. And that seems to be a class thing we're seeing happening, a communist, uh, at the end of the day, I see it as a communist agenda where we have big, 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 huge government that controls our thoughts, our words, our money, our livelihood, our choices, just like we see in places like China. That people like Nancy Pelosi Herald is a wonderful place and a great system. So, so tell me, what are you seeing in the Green New Deal uh, that's in this uh, Inflation Reduction Act? Well, it's interesting that you bring that up because one of the things that uh, that you see kind of just underneath the surface of these is um, tax credits, right, for people to go in and to lease property uh, so that they can put, whether it be solar fields or windmills, there's things in there for hydrogen, different different ways of doing things with diesel, uh, methane gas. They're doing all kinds of uh, little, just just little, you know, and it's, it's so subtle how they're how they're doing this. But you know, they're infiltrating small communities in America, and the problem is that they're tying up this ground that they're putting these 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 different projects on. They're tying it up for 30 to 40 years. Now you just think so. Those tax credits are there now, and the tax credits are going to benefit the companies who are making the upfront push, right? But where will those companies be long term? So if I said to you, you know, we want to bring, um, you know, I represent 3M manufacturing, right? And I want to bring a factory in and we're going to make post-it notes. Well, everybody can say, well, you know, this is a company that's been around. They've been producing this. We, we know what this product is. We know what it's, you know, if people can kind of conceptualize that. Basically, anyone could conceptualize it. But if I say to you, you know, I'm coming in with this Green New Deal, we're going to have all of this this Clean Air Act, and we're going to be able to we're going to be able to convert you know this product or that product into electricity, and we're going to run it into the grid. And you know all you have to do is sign these permanent easements, and all you have to do is sign this lease and sign away this right. It's your that farmland right. in a in a forty year contract. Yeah, right. You won't be farming it, but at the end you're going to reclaim that land, and now you got all this money for the land, That's and you got right. all this upfront money, and you know your land was protected, and now we're going to hand it back to you in a silver plate. Is that really going to happen in 40 years? Well, okay, so this, all of these tax credits run out in 2032. So just doing the math, right? Uh, you know, you think, so you're going to be building these in the next five to seven years, right? So within three years, maybe, of having those built, all of this expires. So that means no more government money propping it up. So my question is, will these companies have the revenue to be able to continue to hold up their deals. Mm. So I represent a lot of landowners. A lot of my practice is representing landowners and I have them you know, bring me contracts and they say, you know, I entered this contract six years ago or five years ago or you know, eight years ago and the company's not living up to the deal. And you know, one of the things that I always see is, you know, you're not looking at a company that you immediately recognize as having you know, tangible assets, right? There are companies that 
you know, are maybe just startups. Maybe it's yeah. just an LLC. Maybe it's just, maybe it's just a sub company. Maybe it's just, you know, maybe a little bit of a subsidiary that was kind of formed to maybe do this new experiment. And they have no assets, right? They've so, only been around five or seven years. They have sure. six employees. At the sure. end of the day, they really have nothing to nothing. back up. Nothing. So now all those solar panels that are supposedly agrivoltaics, which I think is a disgusting word, they try to make it, these are agriculture, to put these solar panels that have cadmium and uh, trillium uh, and, you know, the cadmium, cadmium telluride, these are toxic chemicals. They put them in these panels, put them on people's land, and they say because they're harvesting energy from the sun, now they're all of a sudden an agricultural product, you know, and you look at the stats and you look at last year we actually imported more agriculture than we exported, and people try to explain that away. Well, it was wine and cheese. Ah, you know, anyway, there's red flags, like what's going on in America? What's going on with our farms? What's going on? We, uh, even just in Ohio, almost 100,000 acres lost uh, last year, you know, in, 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 into these projects and across the nation, millions of acreage. And, and they want prime farmland because it's flat. It's easy for them to come in there. So. <laughs> well, we have a lot of that in Ohio, right? Yes, we do, and, and across the farm belt. Sure. So what's going to happen to these farmland fields that supposedly these farmers, it's saving their farm to get involved in. Is it dangerous contractually for these farmers and landowners? Well, you know, you, you think, people like to say, well, you know, in the contract, it, it requires the company that I'm contracting with to take the liability. Well, you know, well, that's a nice thought. However, you know, the, first of all, in the state of Ohio, there are certain there are certain liabilities that you cannot contract away, right? And you know, I have had this happen with clients where you know there is someone on their land doing something that they have authorized. It seems like a perfectly good deal. They are you know maybe paying a lease, maybe paying a short-term lease, um, you know. But let's just say that that company um, negligently um, allows something to happen that hurts someone right? Who's at fault? You know, well, directly, you know, the company that you've leased to is at fault, but you as a landowner, you're going to be sued. I mean, there's just no way around that, right? So because whatever that company does on your sure. land, you're still going to be sued you're, as the landowner. You're going to be in that lawsuit. Now, the question, you know, how much are you going to have to pay? You know, who knows? The question is going to be, you know, how much insurance do they have? How much insurance do you have? How much does everybody want to fight? And again, how big was the accident, right? Mm -hmm. So, and I guarantee you, this is not the kind of thing that people necessarily think of when they're signing a contract. If I, you know, hand you a contract that says, you know, next year I'm going to give you $2 million for, you know, being able to do this on your property, you're, the first thing you're thinking about is the $2 million. The $2 million, wow, that's big money. I, I get to keep my land, wow. Sure, you think, oh, I could do all of this with it, and, you know, and it sounds handed. too good to be true. Maybe it is, right? Well, mm -hmm. you know. Absolutely, you have to stop and think, you know, what kind of liability am I, am I putting my family, you know, am I putting my family at risk, am I, you know, at the end of the day, and another thing you have to consider after you pay the taxes, you know, what, what they say you're getting, you, you have to reduce that in your mind for what, what you're really going to get to keep, and then you, then you say, now I'm looking at this, you know, and then a lot of times you have these companies come back and say, well, we need to modify this. And I've had this happen with all different kinds of companies, you know, whatever they're leasing for, you know, be it pipelines, um, you know, be it, you know, different kinds of industrial, industrial projects, uh, you know, whatever kind of project it is, I have had these companies come back all the time and they want some kind of a modification. Well, you know, then you're kind of forced because it's like, well, do I take the modification or do I, you know, they're already telling me that there's no way they're going to be able to live up to the original agreement. So, you know, I'm either stuck with the modification or I'm stuck with something that I hate even more, right? Right. So the contract also is only as good, no matter what you put in the contract and you negotiate it, it's only as good as the person you made the contract with. So what happens, and it has happened, that these solar companies actually go out of business and now you've got all that equipment on your land that's not been paid for. What happens to that loan owner? Well, you know, in a lot of cases, those are liens that are going to be on your property, right? And those liens run with the land. So, you know, what are you, the question is going to be, what are you going to have to do to get those liens taken off of your property, right? Because they're going to have a lien there, you know, for that equipment because the lien is going to run that as long as that equipment is on your land. 
uh, you know, even though these tax subsidies, to, you know, tax credits exist, that doesn't mean that these companies are going out and they're paying cash for whatever they're putting on your on your land, whether it's some kind of a processor or a solar panel or what, you know, whatever it is, whether it's some kind of pipeline. It doesn't mean that they're paying cash for everything. You know, at the end of the day, you know, even if they forget to pay their employees or don't have the funds to pay their employees, you know, that is a lien that can end up on your property. And you have to think, you know, is that, you know, how am I going to address that? And, you know, when you're making a, when you're making a contract with a company, you know, a lot of times these companies don't have hard assets. You know, think about the companies that you know have, you know, manufacturing plants or you know they've been in business for a hundred years and you know that they have tangible assets that if you had to attach it you could actually go and attach it somewhere right mm -hmm. but if they don't have any of these things and the only reason they exist anyway is because of you know a temporary solution like this where the government is giving these little subsidies to make these things get off the ground then you have to ask yourself well what do they get after that where does that money come from when the government money dries up, and what if what if Plan A doesn't really work, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And when Donald Trump has said already that this is a scam, and the first day of office he said he's going to sign an executive order to stop subsidies of these. I don't even know if those contracts you said going out further, how that impacts all of those things. So have you seen landowners have liens and lawsuits placed against them because of these things? And I can only imagine. This solar field, that's probably, it's not like a tractor for this farmer that's got a lien against his property. This is huge money, right? We're talking big money. We're talking a lot of money, and we're talking a lot of a lot of lawyer fees, a lot of you know court costs. And let's just face it, anytime you get tangled up in any kind of a lawsuit, it's stressful, sure. right? And it's a demand on your time, and any kind of, any kind of um, action, legal action against you, it's stressful for everybody involved, right? And um, uh, you know, you may or may not have, you may say, I've heard people say, oh, it doesn't matter, I've got a really good lawyer. You know, well, you know, I'm glad you do. You know, I'm really glad that you have a good lawyer because you very well may need the good lawyer. <laughs> but you know, there's 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 messes that you know there's messes Even that I'll a lawyer have. lawyer can't fix, right? Well, I'll have a client come to me and say, you know, this is what happened. You know, can you make this go away? And I'll say, well. You know, why didn't you come and see me two years ago? Why didn't you come and talk to me about this before you got to this point, you know? And they'll say, well, you know, you could just, you know, file some things and make this go away. Well, you know, it isn't necessarily that easy. And that may be even where lawyers could get a bad name, right? Because, you know, lawyers can't make every problem disappear, right. you know? Right, and especially when that company, as you said, doesn't have assets really. No. And so a lot of these people are contracting with, the, solar companies are a dime a dozen. There's like 500 That's something right. of them just in Texas, right? And they bankrupt constantly, right? I mean, this is not an unusual thing for them to go out of business and then even to start up in a different name, right? And so what would you say to a landowner who's looking at uh, contracting their field for 30 or 40 years into solar panels? Oh gosh. Well, you know, it, <laughs> look right there and I tell wanna, them. What would I you want, say? Well, I want to make mm. sure that you know we're not. We want to make sure that we're telling people we're not giving legal advice right. today, right? right? Because every situation is fact specific, and I know that your people have that disclaimer at the end of the show. Is you know this isn't legal advice, but this right. is intended to help you think about right. you know the kinds of things that you you know that you're subjecting yourself to you know things that can come up down the road you know what if you end up in a situation where your land your your neighbors are suing you for you know for some kind of a nuisance claim I've, I've researched some of those those nuisances. It's a nuisance. How, how is it a nuisance to have solar panels next to you? Well, you don't know. Right now, you don't know because right now, all you see is the contract and you see the yeah. two million dollars, and you're thinking, well, that's you know, I can pay off my, I can pay off this credit card, and I can take this family vacation, and I can do these things. You know, you're thinking about those things. I can things. retire, it, yes. save the farm for my kids in the next 40 years. They can take it back. Yeah. Absolutely. And it, and it, in the end, you know, when they're off the when they're off the farm, you know, it's mine anyway, right? It's not like I sold the property. Right. However, you know, when you when you stop to really think about it, you know, the opportunity cost of the property. So, you know, I have been in situations where I have seen these, you know, different kinds of companies. And you know, we're not we're not I and I, 
you know, I don't know if I can say this on here, you know, okay, but I'm not inherently anti-solar. Right. I am inherently anti-predatory practice, anti-fraud, you know, anti-coercion, you know, I'm I'm anti I'm anti, you know, government controlling yes. my life and yes, the life too. of my clients. Yes. So, you know, it's not that I just want to attack attack a no. certain kind of company. It's what no, it's and I want to say put on farmland. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, you know, let's face it. We all have been utilizing and relying on farmland for you know, since the beginning of time, right? Okay. So, you know, to suddenly think that we've got a major problem with cattle, ex the existence of cattle, yeah. you have to stop to think. Someone who's telling you that, are, it, mm -hmm. are they, do they have some bigger agenda? Exactly. You know, is there some reason that they, that they you know, are against the cattle, right. Right? right? So, you know, if you have, you know, livestock on your property, since when is this a big problem? Right. You know, but what we do see, you know, is we see a constant push, a constant fight against some of the things that we've relied on. That were so common much. sense. Sure. To have you know. cattle, to have farms, to. Absolutely. <laughs> and the common sense of not calling something tech, you know, it's sticking Absolutely. on a piece of property to make it like it's a, it's a plant when it's a panel made of cadmium, it's made of metal. It's, you know, they, these are, these are things that are being like so pushed that people are starting to adopt it. Well, you know, we've gotten in the habit of believing whatever little story or whatever little lie or whatever little agenda, you know, that the media or the government wants to throw at us. Mm -hmm. You know, we've gotten in, we've got, we've become so susceptible to these little sound bites and these little blurbs, you know, it's just like, you know, oh no, this is global warming or, you know, we have to save the planet yeah. or we need green the energy. The sun's shining today, it must be global warming. Right? Yeah, like, right? No. No, the sun it, has shined and we have had cold seasons and warm seasons. The earth has, the Bible says seed time and harvest time, right? Hot and cold, day and night. It's going to happen from the beginning, the Bible says, to the end. <laughs> Genesis 8, 22, right? Yes, yes. And and that is a, I mean, that right there tells you that the, that the Green New Deal is something that has been cooked up by someone for money. probably for their own purpose, right? Because let's face it, if we look back, when is the last time you remember the government ever doing something that legitimately benefited you? That they really just showed up at your door and they said, you know, Mrs. Cassie, you know, I'm here to help you. I know that your, you know, Visa card bill is due tomorrow and here's the money to pay it. I mean, they just don't do, they just don't help people like, like the that. the Inflation Reduction Act, right? Yes, right. I mean, it didn't really help anybody. It actually gives us higher taxes. Sure. Well, no did inflation you... was reduced. No, inflation. Maybe the government's inflation. Well, the government inflation, but I don't know if you or saw. Or it inflates the government. That's what it means. It does inflate the government <laughs> because, you know, I'm looking at page five from the Con Congressional Budget Office. You know, right here it says funding the Internal Revenue Service and improving taxpayer compliance. 79 billion, they say on this. That's right? in the Inflation yes. Reduction Act. Yes, yes. So we're, we're, our tax dollars are now empowering the IRS to come after to more To come people. after us and to figure out what we're doing wrong, right? And this says right here, estimated outlay, 79 billion. Oh my goodness. So you think, you know, what is that really about? You know, just in the past two days, I got a chance to read uh, your husband's new book and, and I didn't intend to even bring this along today, but you know, I was reading it the other night and it talks about the importance of being business minded, right? Mm -hmm. So if, so if I wanted to sit down and really do something that was going to help inflation, I think I would do what he says right here on page 91, where he's talking about, you know, back in second Kings, where Elisha said to the widow woman, you know, go into the oil business, go sell oil, you know, uh, right here on right. this, this right here, you could just take some That's of the practical. pages, you can take pages right out of this book. And this is true inflation reduction, right? Business. Or, you know, when you talk about, this is the picture overflowing success and provision, right? It's not the tax and spend thing that the government thinks solves everybody's problem, right? right? Overflowing success and provision stands in stark contrast to being out all night and catching nothing. Well, that's what the government wants you to do. They want you to be out fishing all night and catching nothing, you know? And that's what's happening. You know, people are working harder and harder 
to take home less and less. They want your fish nets to be yes. empty, you know? And, um, you know, I don't know if I'm even allowed to recommend this, but I would recommend that all of your viewers, <laughs> yeah, sure. I, that all your viewers read it because, for you know, everybody should be thinking, you know, stop. I'm not going to depend on the government to right. solve my problems, you know, to think, oh, Absolutely. they just passed this Inflation Reduction Act, all my problems are over. No, I need to be thinking and getting some supernatural strategy, right, for how I can do this despite of the government's best efforts, mm -hmm. you know, whether it is going into the oil business or, you know, understanding some Creating new Creating wealth instead of trying to just, yes. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. This is the kind of thing that we're seeing more and more, and I get upset when I when I listen to young people who think that socialism and communism is the answer, and it's wonderful. And like Klaus Schwab at the World Economic Forum says, you know, you'll own nothing and be happy. That's what they think. So it is the absolute, absolute opposite of what God says, giving us free autonomy, freedom to follow uh, uh, God's plan for our life, uh, freedom to create business, freedom of speech, freedom of religion. All of our freedoms are in peril right now, and that, that is the part, I guess, of all of this uh, Green New Deal that is scam is, is the most upsetting to me is at the end of the day, it actually has the capacity to take our energy, take our uh, money, take our food production when we lose more and more farmland, and take our children and take our freedom as a nation. That's the part that fuels me to speak up uh, in my community or speak up. Because when I wrote the book, Fight Like Heaven, I had no idea this was coming to my backyard. I saw it at a national scale uh, and I had no involvement even honestly getting really down into the local politics. But when it came to my back door and I realized, wow, this is gonna hurt, this hurts us, but it hurts all of our neighbors. This isn't being a good neighbor to do these things to our neighbors. And it also isn't a good thing for the landowner. So I began to think, who is the person profiting from this? Well, the solar company that's coming in with their big sales thing and pushing these contracts and doing it for four and five years before anyone knows about it, getting people to sign up and then pay. They pay them like money, other neighbors to be quiet and hush money, I call it, to you know be quiet and not tell anyone. And then it's like the enemy, they move in for the kill and now everybody's tied up in this and now the neighborhood's all split up. The neighbors are upset. And then when I found out the landowner who thought they were getting the $2 million or getting whatever, and this was gonna be great for them, their retirement, their kids, and it's property rights, it's like, no, you are losing your right to your property. Absolutely. It's tied up. You're not gonna be able now, if another opportunity comes to invest it, if that solar company goes out of business, there'll be liens against your property. Now, what do you have? What is your option now? you're gonna to have to sell the land, so it's really a land grab, because now you're gonna to have to pay all these attorney fees, nothing against you, because you're doing your job, but no, they're gonna have this whole turmoil in their life that they thought was gonna be an answer for them. And so where are the advocates? Why are politicians driving these agendas? What is in it for them? Well, you know, you have to ask yourself, how is it that nearly every politician that you look at in Congress, from the time they go in until the time they go out, that their net worth skyrockets? It goes up exponentially. So they have figured out that um, it's lucrative for them to be in the office, right? So we never, I think we never really understood that term limits should have been essential. Absolutely. Because the longer they're there, the more they have a chance to continue to line their own pockets. So yes. if you look at what the salary of anybody in Congress or any elected official is, it shouldn't be the kind of money that is allowing them to to increase in wealth during that time the way that they are. And let's face the it, Biden family is a great example. Absolutely. I mean, it was always supposed to be. So if you have a family that has been in public service, public service, remember, is for servanthood. over four, 40 it's years, servanthood. Yeah, for 40 years, um, how is it that they are worth hundreds of millions of dollars? How, how can and that? Some more than even that, right? Yes, right. Yeah. So, but you, you know, you think about how that has, um, you know, given those people an opportunity it's given them a platform and as their platform gets bigger their influence gets bigger and you know they realize you know there's there's something I've got something good going on right. here right. you know someone was just mentioning today you know the um, you know the congresswoman Liz Cheney you know just look at her net worth when she went in and look at her net worth when she went out you know why is there such a dramatic 
right. you know, dramatic difference. Yeah, and so it looks to me like companies and corporations can benefit by doing favors for these politicians, mm -hmm. funding their campaigns, but what, whatever else we don't even begin to know. And I know these politicians also invest in the things they're voting in. So they get investments in there and now they have a, a reason to want to push this through. While our rights are violated, our civil rights, our property rights. Yeah, by the way, you know, people will use property rights and I've heard politicians even use that to try to make people think, yeah, these are my rights, I can do what I want with my property. Is that the way it really is? And, and you know, we used to say, well, if you're gonna put a power plant or a casino or a strip club or a nuclear power plant, electrical power plant in someone's neighborhood, there had to be zoning, they had to go through certain protocols, the neighbors and all that. They're trying to do this all now without any of that by calling them agricultural products. What is behind all of that? Well, when you talk about rights, this sounds very familiar uh, to when they were talking about women's rights, right? Women's mm -hmm. right to choose. I can do what I want with my own body. And, you know, the very best example of, of that one that I ever heard was, you know, well, just um, get in your convertible with no clothes on and drive down the highway at 90 miles an hour and let the, you know, let the breeze, you know, just soak up the sun today and see. You know, see how far you get with that. What kind of a you know, what kind of a right do you have with your own body? There's a limit, right? right. And, and there's limits to property rights. It's the as same well. thing with property yes. rights. You know, if I go into my property and I want to do, like you said, um, you know, a casino. You know, well, you know, that's my property. I should be able to do whatever I want. It's a 40-year lease. I should be able to do whatever I want. You know, but what they're not thinking about, it's the same thing. Nuisance, right? Uh, you know, what are you going to do when the neighbors have determined that this is a major nuisance, that there's a lot of problems? I, I know that there is a small scale solar project not too far from us. The solar panels have maybe been in maybe 12, 14 years. You know, they're not working right. You know, they can't get anybody to come and fix them, right? You know, the grass and the weeds are growing up through them. You know, it's becoming a nuisance. It's becoming a problem, right? So are you still going to be saying property rights then or are you going to be looking to the government local officials to say, hey, you should be cleaning this up and oh, by the way, why did you ever let this happen in the first place? Right, And that's you know? what I try to tell officials at the end of the Absolutely. day, they're going to be angry with you because you did not protect their properties. That's right. It sounds like property rights now, but it just sounds just like women's rights to choose. Right. So but there's limits. There's limits to these things. You cannot you cannot just take these little sound blurbs and say property rights or, you know, this right or that right we don't have that kind of I mean we don't nobody expects that kind of autonomy it, yes. because it impacts other, other people. people yes right yes, it, does. it absolutely does and you know nuisance is a big thing you know and you and you like to think well my property just affects me no your property affects everyone around you it affects your entire community it affects your neighborhood it affects your county and when you're talking about eliminating all kinds of farmland, like in your earlier example, you're talking about something that impacts potentially the world, right? Because, you know, then you have no agricultural products there that, you know, people can't eat solar, people can't eat, you know, clean hydrogen, people, you know, no matter what they want to do, um, you know, they cannot, they cannot eat some of these products. And right. that's just something that's fundamental. Right, and some, some, even across the world now, there are people speaking up and saying, wait a minute, CO2, we were told it was so, so bad, but is it really bad? And the plants and the whole con uh, connection that God created between plants and people, there is a connection there that is a healthy, uh, cohesive thing. And so when we start saying, oh, got to eliminate all CO2, got to eliminate all these pre-industrial levels of we've got these, these things, come on, let us wake up and recognize that there are those who want your money, they want your life, they want your freedom, they want to make money. I mean, you know, Bill Gates is part of the solar farm movement while he's telling us that we're going to have food shortages. How ludicrous is that? They tell us we're going to have another pandemic when they're, they're the ones make the money off the vaccinations. So we need to have a little bit of common sense and think who is making what. If it's too good to be true, it's probably too good to be true. If it sounds too good, you know, you better think twice about it. And uh, I just want to encourage you today. You've got to stay on guard. We live in a time where there is so much deception and we see groups like the World Economic Forum and their agendas uh, that have been going on since 1971. They have been planning for the takedown. They've been planning for the takedown 
of America and of our autonomy. And so let's open our eyes and recognize what may be happening in our backyard may be part of a bigger world agenda and hurt you, your family, and your ge generations to come So, uh, in our nation. So anyway, I encourage you today, if you haven't read Open for Business, like Karina said, great. Fight like heaven, I lay out some of these agendas and I encourage you, get involved in your local community. Get involved and figure out what's going on and stand together as a community to stop some of these agendas that could destroy your very community and family and farmland and life, you know, your liberty and your pursuit of happiness. So thanks for joining me today. Karina, thank you so much for being with me. And uh, if you've been caught in some kind of snare, thank God for people like Karina. Uh, you know, all attorneys are, and all politicians are not bad. There are those that are fighting for your freedom and trying to help you protect your life and your property and uh, your, your livelihood and family. So anyway, thanks for joining me today. And until I see you next time, let's stay on guard. Share this with someone, like, subscribe, comment, share it today. We'll see you next time here at Drenda On Guard.